Hi, everybody. I hope you had a good holiday. What's up, everybody? Uh, How y'all doing? Happy holidays. We've still got New Year's to go. I probably had one of the best Christmases ever. And to be quite honest, I wasn't going to come on today, uh, except per Perry heard uh, about Storm Monroe uh, getting his channel struck. Yep. And uh, we had to come on and talk about it, too, because sometimes you feel like you're the only one. Mm -hmm. And so but you're not the only one. And we had heard about this weeks ago that they were going to start striking bloggers channels. And to be quite honest, I'm not going to say I didn't give a damn, but I've been through this before. And there's about six bloggers. This is, so, so times have changed. I'm trying to get people to understand. We don't have Wendy Williams anymore. Right. TMZ does not focus on urban blogs or right. urban information. They're too busy right. copying from Jason Lee. Like they, they just copy everything Jason Lee does. It's about six reputable blogs that really know the people that we're talking about and have access to these people. Anybody else, I'm not trying to put any other bloggers down, but I just don't see how, where they're getting their information from. There's only about six of us. And Storm and Roe is one of them. Out of all the people He's not, he's not a liar. No, I mean, he, he just takes, you're mad. Yep. You're Very mad true. because rumors are getting out there. And so you want to go after the people you think started the rumors. I've been covering you. I've been covering this story. These stories did not come from the blogs. We get the information. Yep. This, this story on TG. TDJs came from your church members that was clogging up my DMs. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that today. Oh, you are messy, Perry. Power, you know, y'all are messy. No. <laughs> Terrell, I'm here to just keep it real. Happy um, holidays, everybody. But hell, you know, we about to go into a new year. But while everybody enjoying their Christmas, hanging out, having fun, enjoying their family, the big cover up come out. He have a damn sermon. I don't want to go too far from your story because I'm not, I'm, I'm not just talking about him. We'll get to him in a minute, but he he's mad. Allegedly you're mad because people are saying things about you, but you need to check in your own church. Remember when they tried to talk to you. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. I have told you guys my story over and over again. I said, my sister's been a part of the Academy since the mid nineties. She worked for, uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil, who was owned by Hopper Productions at one time, she knows you. Yep. I don't make it up. No one's just making up shit. You have changed, Miss Winfrey, with all due respect. Wow. Us other older people, we got to listen to the younger people. They're not just blowing smoke out of their ears. No. We're, right. we're going to talk about that. Um, as far as, uh, uh, Jackie, I want to cover Jackie really quick because I'm getting tired of black women bringing each other down. I'm just sick of it. So we're talk about that. Let's start with Miss Winfrey. Okay. Because I put a story out there about, uh, Taraji P. Henson mm -hmm. and Oprah Winfrey is one of the people that is underpaying her. If you missed that video, go back and look at it. This story came from a publicist. I just didn't wake up one day and say, Oprah Winfrey, let me just lie and make some shit up about this well-established woman. Because I'm going to be respectful. You're very established. And I feel that in the beginning, you were so happy to be famous and to be out of Mississippi. And you made it. Mm -hmm. And you cared about people. This business changes you. And after a while, it is my opinion, and I'm allowed to have an opinion, after time, you could have so much money that you forget that you're black. You yeah. can forget. Because you're not getting treated the way we're treated every day. Right. And she hasn't been, been, been treated that way in years. Because like when she started making money, your social... Uh, like you like like the, the people you socialize with changes as you grow up and then you know as you making more money and you get to these certain clubs and stuff like that i think she simply forgot 
I think you forgot that you're and I and you start targeting the black race. This is my opinion. This is what I've seen through over the years. I met you way back in the beginning. You were nice. You get a car and you get a car. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. These rappers, they don't uh, uh, fit my definition of what a human being is supposed to be. You know, Ludacris, you're only on here because you did a movie. I don't support you and your kind. What is his and his kind? His blackness. It's about status. You know, you want to out Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is a pedophile. Michael Jackson's no good. I'm going to do a, a documentary on Michael Jackson. He's not even here to defend himself, but I'm going to make sure everybody knows he's a piece of shit. But I'm not going to say nothing about my boy Harvey Weinstein that I produce movies with. Not one damn peep. Oh, hell no. Okay. I'm going to say nothing about Harvey Weinstein. Nothing. Yeah. Simmons, you're less than human. But I'm not going to even let you tell your side of the story. I'm going to do a documentary without even talking to your ass. Uh -huh. Oh, and free has changed, people. People change throughout the years. She's right. out of touch. She's out of touch. Yeah, she back in the mid 80s. I don't and give a damn what Taraji P. Henson says. She wasn't crying for no damn reason. I got that story from a publicist. You did not talk to her. We got it on tape. So you might clean it up now, Taraji, who I respect and love, and I get it. You're in the game. We don't want to make a monster out of Miss Winfrey. But what you don't see is that everybody sees through her. You didn't pay them right. It is what it is. Then the public finds out about it. So I'm going to have somebody, maybe me, maybe for somebody from your production company. I don't know who the F it was. Let's have, let's have them contact this blogger, Sherelle's World, and tell her what's well, not really <laughs> Oprah Winfrey's fault. It's Steven right. Spielberg's fault. Right. And if anybody you should go after, you shouldn't go after Oprah. You should go after Steven Spielberg. No, I should go after Oprah because that's how I felt about Oprah Winfrey. Right. Because it You're is an African-American woman. Right. I'm a lot of stuff. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a mother. I'm sorry, Perry. I'm on a roll. Oh, yeah, I got you. <laughs> I, I'm a wife of 33 years. I'm not no young girl. I'm 53 years old. If I see something that I don't like, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Don't have nobody call me up on this BS. Somebody, I work for such and such. I don't care where you work. I say what I feel, how I think. I listen to the younger generation because I'm. I was shocked. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, you guys don't like Oprah, and when they start laying it down, because I don't think about Oprah no more. She doesn't come on TV. You know, whatever. I'm like, uh -huh. you got a point. You were in a unique position. You could have made Taraji P Henson one of the highest paid persons in a musical. You chose not to. According right. to the rumors, you chose or, not to. Or Whoopi. Or Whoop. Let's not talk about Whoopi okay, Goldberg. I know, I got because Whoopi Goldberg is the color purple. You did her wrong, in my opinion. And that's what people with money forget. You're not the only one with an opinion. No, I agree. So they, what they try to do is say, the bloggers, they don't know what they're talking about. They just make up stuff. And, oh, oh, bleh, ooh, bloggers. No, you need the bloggers, okay? You need the bloggers because TMZ is not focused on our issues. And they, no. copy, they copy Jason Lee to get what they want mm -hmm. from our, our issues. It's the blogs, you know, the people that are beneath you. Yeah. It's the blogs. Times are we don't even have w Wendy Williams anymore. So when they want to threaten people, Wendy's gone. We can't send Total to go beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to get to the blogs. Nobody's making up stories about anybody. And not only that, I'm not forcing anybody to believe some shit they, they, they don't want to believe. If well, you Sherelle, don't want to believe it, stop watching me. Sherelle, How about that? That's the thing about social media. You've been in this about five, six years, five, whatever. 
You know what I mean? Like, people come to the show because they got their opinion. And they come for verification. Like, to make sure, you know, well, this person said it. Yeah, I'm definitely right. If you say anything objective to what their opinion is, then you get all the bullshit in your chat, right? But everybody got an opinion, just like the people that's following, that's watching. You got an opinion. Whether yours right or my right, mine is right. We both have an opinion and we don't have to agree. But when you don't, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. She's a line mf -er, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But go ahead. I Shirley. have just as many connections in Hollywood as you do. Even more. Mm -hmm. Because people don't give a damn what they say around me. It is what it is. You're out of touch. You forgot what it's like to be a black woman. When you have the power to help black women, you uh -huh. chose not to. Don't go get somebody a, a, a damn Birkin bag. No one cares. That's not when you got to step up to the plate when you're uh -huh. looking bad. You got to fight for us. Why not? Somebody fought for you. Somebody fought for you. Don't try to change when you're looking bad. It has to come from the heart, like the old days. Remember how you had heart? Remember how you had heart back in the old days? You got to have heart. Because people forget. So people, so celebrities get so damn selfish. It's about me, me, and what I can conquer. And mm -hmm. More and more and more. Wah! That's what they're all about. Yeah, it's all about ego. See, you can take a person from the ghetto and put them there, that they're appreciative and all that, as they make more and more, that they soon seem to lose the distance of who they really are. And now they're just in a social club. And I'm going to say this to the old people. I'm old, so I'm talking to my peers, okay? Mm -hmm. Time changes. Life study moves forward. It study moves forward, and you have to stay on board. You have yep. to move with it. And a lot of people my age, 50 and up, they want to stay stuck in the past. I remember when Oprah, that, that was back when. Right. You've got to change with the times. It's nothing worse than an old person talking about some shit that doesn't matter anymore. Well, yeah. And then, like, with Oprah, let me just chime in on this. Like, we all used to watch Oprah, the people of our age. Watch her. We've seen her grow. But then she grew so much, she forgot where she came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, that's the change. Let that's what the younger people see. Let me say this to you, Gene, and people that are stuck in our ways. We were so proud of Oprah. Oprah because she broke down some walls and she made it and we were proud of her but people change people change when you live a certain lifestyle you forget I bet you Oprah ain't been in no house no smaller than 5,000 square feet oh shit that does that was the motel room, yeah. <laughs> like you forget people change and you gotta listen to the younger generation what you think they just mean and they just want to pull a rabbit out of the hat and just let's just go after Oprah. No, they see. Well, OK, you doing this documentary about Michael Jackson and you are hell bent on he is guilty and the man is nowhere around to defend his name. Mm -hmm. But Harvey Weinstein comes through and these victims are telling you, no, this is what he did to me. Mm -hmm. And you say nothing. You produce movies with you. That's your buddy. You say nothing. Not a damn thing. You yeah. don't have time for the rappers because you're above it all. Oh, yeah. They're oh, telling okay. you, hey, times has changed. We use the N-words in our songs because we don't mean it like that no more. No, no, this is how it was. This has always got to be. We have got to keep up with the times. You know how old people are. We still, some of us still wearing bell bottoms because you're going to get back in them <laughs> pants in the 70s. Nobody wears bell bottoms anymore. No, they you don't. have got to keep an open mind. Y'all really think that young people just mad, just mean to Oprah because they just want to be? Listen to what they're saying. No, Times I mean, change. You're not the smartest in the room I, anymore. And other people say stuff that matters. No, I agree with that, Sherelle. Like, but 
that's the part we had to focus on. It's the difference in age and, and time. The people are of our age, we, we go back to Oprah when she was up and coming and, you know, being all this. But when people get so much success, they get an ego. They move on. Just like uh, in life in general. Like our age, the young people that we raise now know they have a right. They have a right to do this. But some older people, like when we went to Virginia, for example, I, I ran across some people. I was like, well, shit. Uh, Miss Daisy said you can't do that. You had to tell them, look, motherfucker. Slavery over, right? I'm just saying, like, at a certain point, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like a generation gap. You know what I'm saying? So the older people might think a certain way, but the younger people have, we can say it's crazy because we don't want to adapt to it or understand what they're saying. Yeah. They they looking at Oprah just for what she is. We looking at, for her, uh, looking at Oprah, this up and coming person that we cherish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was making a move. So, they got the right to say it, and you know, people are so open. Well, I mean, she could be, but what have Oprah done for you lately? And and and, and people can say, yo, if she get the charities, yeah, it's just for a write off, in my opinion, it's for a write off yeah. or just to act like this high sedity, like I do care. But acting like you care don't mean you care. Go ahead, Sheryl. And we have to fight. African American women, African Americans have to fight for acceptance and and uh, just to be equal. We have to fight. Women have to fight. African Americans have to fight. And there would have been nothing wrong with Oprah jumping in there being Taraji's cheerleader, being Fantasia's cheerleader. Say, I know I got a hit on my hands. Mm -hmm. She's worth no less than this. So people aren't going to say it in the industry because they're worried about their jobs, but we can say it. Right. We can say Taraji is top tier. She is. And that's our superstars. Shame on you, Oprah. Shame on you, girl. And now you know you looking bad. That's my opinion. And now you want to come out and clean it up. Right. I don't have anything against you. But I think you're out of touch. And you're definitely in a position that you could fight more for women and African-American women. You choose not to. So I choose to call it out. I'm not turning on Steven Spielberg because I don't feel any type of way towards him. I feel a way towards you. Right. Well, like, that that's the whole thing. Because people like that one lady that, well, I'm assuming it's a lady that said that she's part of the thing and you're wrong about whatever. But Steven Spielberg- the lady that, that wrote me that letter? Yeah. Girl, get out of here. We don't expect Steven Spielberg to feel the same way as a black woman should after she had to go through the ringers and work her way all the way up. If anybody know, it was hard for Oprah, but she made it. But don't forget how the challenges you had and not uplift other black Americans. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem I got with it. They can say, well, Steven Spielberg is the one over the big, the whole project. Oprah have a say-so. If you can tell me Oprah don't have a say-so, you a damn lie. If she wanted these people and she got so much money, is it a money thing? Or is it just that she don't want nobody in comparison to her? She want to be sitting on a goddamn uh, pedestal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead, Terrell. All I'm saying is, us old people, open your mind. Listen to the younger generation. Times change. And that was in the past. And nothing's worse than an old fogey, old person that's stuck in the damn past. Oprah's out of touch. Oprah forgot what it's like to be black. And I'm going to yep. say it. Well, now you can say it. So y'all can <laughs> stop with the letters, the production companies. I don't give a damn. So, so they don't have... And we're not dumb. I know our power in the in, as a blog. There's no uh, Wendy Williams anymore. There's no other gossip column. Mm -hmm. I don't think that caters to our urban market. I mean, y'all do the best that you can, uh, TNZ. But I've seen you guys copy straight from Jason Lee, <laughs> and then you don't give them credit. 
Right, right. So the blogs are worth more than you are trying to make it out to be. We know our worth. Stop striking our shit. Mm -hmm. No one's just making up shit on you. And no one's making anybody. But if you want to still love Oprah and stay stuck in the 90s, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I but mean, I'm not. Good. And I'm putting, a, uh, putting it out there. Oprah, step up. You could be doing more. Right. Step up. And tell you step up. I ain't got no respect for you. And it is what wanna, it is. If you want to roll with Oprah, when you get on that bus, just roll your ass to the back. Because <laughs> that's what she's going to set you. I'm just saying, like, at a certain point, I, I just feel like, you know, people want to give her the pass because I love her so much. They, they put people on these pedestals. Just mentally, you ain't never smelled Oprah, seen her fat ass, nothing. Right. But you want to say, oh, Oprah, this and that. Back in the day, we understood her struggle. We supported her struggle. Not that we knew her personally. Right. But at this point, to get so high and mighty, to forget where you came from. To me, is just crazy. People supported you. Now you're not giving the same support back. And it makes it worse when you got billions of dollars that you could do it and it don't hurt you. So, I mean, that's some selfish shit, not inviting Whoopi. I know we're not going to get into that. Oh. The thing, it's what like you, uh, a person get into these clubs and they forget where they're from. Now, oh, I'm in the billionaire club now. Whoopi, I don't need, Whoopi I don't need, Goldberg I don't is need the no color more. purple. How dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you? Gene, I like you. You've been a long time supporter. It is all on Oprah. Oprah had a unique opportunity that not a lot of black women had. She could have brought this star studded cast on and really made a difference. She could have embraced Whoopi Goldberg, brought the queen along with her. Whoopi Bo Goldberg is an EGOT winner. She is, I, I love her. She put in her work. Why do that to somebody? So uh, all of us old people over here, let's just stop fighting and just listen to what I'm saying. And I'm saying Oprah has gotten old. Oprah is out of touch. Oprah forgot she's black and she don't want to help anybody but her little white circle, period. And then I'll say this to this comment, right? I would say this. People would say, say, oh, Oprah, you know, she don't get nothing to do with this. It's the higher ups. If it wouldn't be another color purple musical or whatever the hell it was without Oprah, she have a lot of say so. And typically people get into these powers. They try to put themselves in a spot where they have a safeguard when they screw other people over to say, oh, well, it wasn't my decision. It was somebody else's. If Oprah said, hell, she could have taken like, less pay for what she was making off the movie to pay these people. So I don't want to hear Oprah didn't have nothing to do with it. Oprah had the responsibility that we gave her many years ago and supported her. And now she don't be seen, she don't seem to be doing the same. Let's move on to uh, T.D. Jakes, because these all these scandals hit at one time. Let's talk about T.D. Jakes. Mm hmm. OK. I understand and I respect that he's a man of the cloth. And it was his church members that reached out to me first. I did this, this story weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They felt uncomfortable with their preacher being involved in the freak offs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, know, like, and then when they try to talk to you about it, you mm -hmm. call them hypocrites. <laughs> You call them hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I don't want, listen, it had nothing to do with you being gay and where you put your thing. I don't care. This right. is about a man rip, misrepresenting who he is when you're a man of the cloth and people come and rely on you for spiritual guidance. I there agree. are some people that uh, they're never going to believe that their preacher did anything wrong because that's just who they are. If he has the title bishop, preacher, whatever, and I'm not trying to disrespect whatever the rank structure is, they're going to believe you. Yeah, it's bishop. But, but they, uh, T.D. Jakes is human. Right. 
And that's the part he seemed to forget, but go ahead. That's a, the thing that some of the church members, the ones that were writing me, would have added to. No blogger made up a story on your, your preacher. These were the rumors out there. No one told the man to go to the freak offs. He was all at the birthday parties. Mm -hmm. Some people were like, mm, this doesn't sit right with me. Stormman wrote in, make some shit up. Let, let's just go after TD Jakes just because I'm in the mood. Uh -huh. This came from your own congregation. You didn't want to listen to them. It came from his so own They were forced to go to the blogs. And it also came from his actions. You know, because people can judge What Puffy just laying his head all on you. Yeah, okay. Like, well, when is the last time you laid your head on your pastor's chest? Never and never will. <laughs> I mean, please. See, you know, now y'all want to blame the blogs? It is my opinion, and I'm a loud one. And I say this very respectfully. But you're 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 grown. You live in today's society. You're full of shit. Come on, you come up here on Christmas talk about. I'm not gonna talk about it. But then what do you do? You talk about it, right? You want to say what you want to say about it, but you don't want to be asked no questions, none. And if you're a man of the cloth, and you're of your stature, why can't we ask you a question? Mm -hmm. What was you doing at the freak off? Why puffy head on your damn shoulder? I can't, Perry, I can't. We're allowed to ask, what preacher tells you you're a hypocrite? Oh, you weren't hurt. Uh, what did he say? You weren't hurt about. Oh, he's, he said you wouldn't. Uh, a person came across and said they was mad at the church. You you mad at the church? You wasn't mad at the stripper. You wasn't mad at all this crazy shit, right? But the whole thing is this, right? Like. I feel like he used this weekend, and when you're saying, well, who does that? A person that feel that they can. And we all heard the word grooming for a long time, you know, and it don't happen overnight. They groom these people. They, they give them some guidance, give them religion, you know, talking the facts. But their motives is different than what the clients are. When I say clients, the, the conjugation, right? And um, he's all about TD. TD Jakes, right? That's why when you can lead a church, and no, you shouldn't be hanging out in the crack house or whorehouse and none of that shit like that, but he does it only when it can benefit him to be this icon of America. He don't left the church a long time ago. Ugh, now, ugh. what's going on between him and his marriages, alleged things that both of them buy, whatever. I'm fine with that. But just don't come out here and preach to these people and lie to your members. If that's what you are, be who you are. Mm -hmm. You still can preach the word. Yeah. But yeah. He's so full of shit. And that shit he pulled off this weekend was highly disgusting. And I'm trying yeah. to tell you, if you're a church member that still believe in your, your bishop and you feel that he does no wrong, take a step back. Stop being defensive. Let's look at some things here. Should mm -hmm. you be able to just approach your preacher and ask him, why are you at the freak off? Or were you there? I mean, were you there? He came across. Are you not there? I'm not addressing anything. Uh, you know, I know people here that want me to do this and that. You owe it to your members. You don't owe me shit. Mm -hmm. But you owe it to your members that you collect in dollar bills off every, every damn day, right? Mm -hmm. And he come up, well, people coming in for this and that. But uh, I'm a guy's man. Well, hell, allegation says you was a man's man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just telling you this. When you want to come on here and act a fool, looking like a black-ass Santa in that fucking red suit. Y'all okay, see it? If we see like it. a black-ass Santa, <laughs> and you got people lined up, allegedly, what I heard, as he grooming them more with his bullshit, coming up to the altar, dropping money off. It's a money grab for him. And, the, and, the, and, the, and those church members that are devastated by this and feel like that someone's attacking your bishop, you have to remember, we've had false prophets before. Right. There are people that believe Bishop Long to the end. Mm -hmm. But you have to ask yourself, does this story sound right? 
Why won't he address it? Well, it's everywhere. Why aren't you re addressing it? Right. He can't address it. Now, see, this is a part. When you start striking people's channels, like they did Storm doing and all this. And now you're going after the blogs? Right. That's a, now, that's a sign of guilt. Go ahead, Perry. Sorry. Think about it, Sherelle. You can go after the blogs and strike their channel. I'm not, I'm unworried. I'm unbothered. Mm -hmm. Right. But you striking people's channels. If you know it's a lie and you know you didn't do it, you wouldn't have those worries. You had this sermon to come and try to convince people to come back to your church because I heard it was half empty. Oh. Okay. And let's keep it real. So then he had people come up. And I can't really blame the people. It's like they was groomed into this situation where they, they, they truly believe in him. And, and you can believe in somebody that's truly fake. And also, too, that doesn't mean they have to cut them off. If you're a preacher, you don't mind your preacher being at the freak off because you somebody ain't perfect and you say, yeah, he go to the freak off, but he gives me a good service. That's okay, yeah. too. But don't be know. blind. But see, that that's the whole thing. When you get in too deep into that stuff, just in my opinion, into that church when people groom you and all this, they feel like he is this person. They admire him. He's basically like God, how they look at it. So when you say something bad about it, they can always come back with something like, oh, no, not my preacher. They ain't even thinking he did it. But T.D. Jakes know what the fuck he did or didn't do. But I think I know after this weekend, looking like a damn black ass Santa coming on the stage with that bullshit, collecting money. It's all about this, Trina. Here comes the money. <laughs> oh, God, <Mary>. <laughs> yeah. It's all yeah. about that. He don't yeah. care about them. That's why he yeah. venture out because he want to be known bigger than just a, a bishop. It, he want to be in a social club with P. Diddy, <sighs> Tyler Perry, Oprah. No, he want to be all like that. Now, <laughs> are you really concerned with the church or just yourself? And Time's and we're all, all, no one's above being asked questions. Nobody. I should be Nobody. able to question anybody on this planet. If your name is Oprah Winfrey, like, girl, why didn't you step up for Taraji? Why didn't you step up for Fantasia? You think because you go buy Fantasia a Birkin bag that all is forgiven? Oprah, you're not? No, I don't like women like you. And yeah. TD Jakes, why can't we ask you questions? Where did the term super bottom come from? What does mm -hmm. it mean? And why are they accusing your ass of being a super bottom? Mm -hmm. They ain't talking about no other preacher. They talking about you. Right. There should be a level of accountability for church leadership. There has to be. There ha if there's no accountability, then they could tell us anything. They could rob us blind till we're just, just rob us blind. That's pretty much what and they it's do. happened in the past. How do you think we get to people like Jim Jones? They start out normal, but mm -hmm. the more power they get, the more these people believe whatever they say without asking a question. And now you're striking blogs. Yeah. Ask that. You're striking a blog. I thought you were above it all. I mean, shouldn't he be reading a scripture or something or feeding, feeding one of his members or helping one of his members that's in need? No, no, no. Team, I need you to go out there and hit these bloggers that's trying to just discredit my name. See, it's all about my, me, right? Yeah. With him. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. his fat ass, right? Because I, I was like, well, you know what? Like, look, even right now, it's not, not that, it's no evidence to say he actually did do it, but he's acting very guilty. Very guilty. How you well, I don't want my preacher hanging at no freak off. That's just... It's just uncomfortable for me. The Bible mm -hmm. says, avoid very appearance of evil. That means no freak parties. <laughs> no freak. I mean, please, just, just the, the arrogance of it all is you don't ask me anything and I don't have to address you. Mm -hmm. Because what do you say? I'm not going to address a lie when I can preach the truth. You're not preaching the truth. Right. And basically he said, I'm not going to discuss my personal affairs at the freak off. But I'm going to preach so you can give me some more damn money. That's a sign of guilt. I'm going to make sure that my church stay filled so I can gain. Those people that pay 10%, when people walk through that door, they don't get paid 10%. And that's a different argument. I'm just saying, like, he's full of shit. It's a money grab. And I think he know that his time is coming. Because didn't he practice under Eddie Long? I, 
if I remember, because I ain't really big in the church. I, I could be wrong. I remember. So, I, no, I, know. I think Bishop was Giselle's ex. I think he he has new birth now, but I'm not even in the church like that. So don't don't let me start lying. I'm gonna take some calls after I say this because a lot of yeah. people got a lot okay. of shit to say in the chat. And I'm gonna let you say what you're gonna say, but I'm gonna say what I gotta say right now. And as far as I'm concerned right now, it don't smell like smell right, T D Jakes. And I'm not believing nothing you got to say. I'm just not. And then your arrogance, the way you're acting, right. we're not allowed to talk to you. But you're a man just like I'm a man. Just like my husband's man. You're a man. Why can't we ask you? Why Why was you at the freak off? What was you doing there? Right, right. Why are they calling you a power bottom? Why are they saying this? You just expect me to put on blinders and not ask no questions? That's the first sign of guilt. You trying to turn your church into a damn cult. And I ain't buying it. Right, it's the coat, and you ain't no Jesus. different than David Miscavige. You are turning your church into a cult. Do what I say, not as I do. Right, no, I, I agree. I mean, because like, this is just my opinion. Like I said, I don't go to church. Never met the guy. None of that shit. But churches together, we can't come in here if you're a church member and say, "Oh, these things don't go all up, go in the church." We don't do those kind of things. We don't hurt plenty, plenty of priests doing freaky shit, preachers. And now bishops doing freaky stuff, you know, and Eddie Long. So his people felt the same way, but he found out being guilty. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying uh, T.D. Jakes is guilty or not. It's, the evidence ain't there, but he's not sounding like a man with confidence. So if you ask me, do I believe him? My answer is this. My mind's telling me no. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. You know no, what I'm saying? My, so, look at my cousin. <laughs> What's up, Tiana? Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sherelle, like the whole thing is that he's out there now, and I truly think, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. that he feel like his time is coming to an end. And so, like a cat back into a corner, mm -hmm. they just jump out and scratch. And mm -hmm. that's what his fat ass doing right now, mm -hmm. trying to save mm -hmm. the conjugation, because I heard that it wasn't full. Yeah, that's crazy. And there's a lot of stuff, you know, uh, he, he has a shady background, period. We heard about uh, the, what is her name, Michelle Loud coming out saying that your daughter stole her child. Jason, right. you've got a bad reputation already. Freak mm -hmm. off was just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Y'all, y'all got uh, so much dirt and, and, and a bad reputation already. No blogger is out to get you. Your church members is tired of your shit with all due respect. Okay. I want to talk about them. I want to talk about Oprah and I'm going to take calls because I want to hear what you guys have to say. And you know, if you want to believe them, believe them, mm -hmm. but that don't mean I believe them and have a right to say it. And I wish you would try to strike this channel. Yeah. If there's not a bigger sign of guilt is when they start contacting me. I'm with such and such production company. I don't give a damn. I told you guys a long time ago. I'm not impressed by Hollywood. Hollywood's impressed with themselves. Mm -hmm. You're a bunch of nut jobs. I'm not impressed with Hollywood. I'm not impressed with money. So I'm just one of them people that can't be bought. I'm also not blinded by religion. Just because you have the preacher title, the title preacher, and you say some shit that don't make no sense to me. Right. I'm going to question it. I'm allowed to do that. I cannot be in a cult. I'm not one of them people. I, fo I follow no one blindly. I wanted to talk about Jackie, Dr. Jackie, and you guys don't watch this channel, so I'll make it really quick. A lot of you don't watch uh, uh, Married to Medicine. Listen. The Hollywood game is vicious. So is reality TV. And what I'm so upset about is everybody wants to say, oh, she came out and she said this about black women. I can't remember what she said. Something about we complain too much. Listen, Dr. Jackie has a real damn job. She's an OGBYN. We need female doctors. I don't like it when reality TV goes so low that they try to come and scratch each other eyeballs out. I know there's a plan behind the scenes to take down the cast. If you used to be on that cast, 
you used to be on the cast. Don't be stuck in the cat past. You not no more. You have no reason to go after these women besides jealousy. I'm not going to let it go down. She apologized. That has nothing to do with her being a doctor. That has nothing to do with her cause of supporting African-American women with our doctors. So I'll get into it uh, a little later, but I wanted you guys to say, leave her alone. This is being orchestrated by some evil people behind the scenes, some fucking liars uh-huh. that want to take her down, not because of the, her being a doctor or that she treated this patient bad. This, it's all has to do with reality TV and who gets the most spotlight. Yeah. So I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. I just can't stand it. And y'all don't know, see the shit that I see. And black women don't know how to stick together for, so people fall in love with fame, not just black people. Some people get a taste of it Mm -hmm. and they will stop at nothing to keep it. Let me drop this link. If anybody wants to come up, cause I'm gonna let you speak your mind. Cause that's what we do over here. People get a taste of fame and don't know how to act. Girl, it ain't nobody scared of you, Oprah Winfrey. We're just not. And I'm not hanging on to the past. You're not the fresh upstart no more. You've been around for a long time and you just don't want to see nobody do better than you, including Whoopi Goldberg. Damn, this chat going so fast. (laughs) I know. My goodness, I can't even put it. Let me try it again. There's no reason why Whoopi Goldberg shouldn't have anything to do with the color purple, even if she just promoted it. Mm -hmm. This is just too fast for me. It's too fast. There's no reason. There's no reason but for uh, Oprah Winfrey. Hi, Spoonful. Sound off. Hey, how are you? Okay. Sorry. Let me say this. Now, Oprah Winfrey started in my hometown, which is Shot Town. When okay. she first started, let me take these headphones off. Can you hear me? I can hear you good. I'm not going to even interrupt nobody this time. I'll let you talk one at a time. Go okay. Ahead. When she first started, it was AM Chicago. Rob Weller had that show. Oh, she yeah, came yeah. out of Tennessee. She came out of Tennessee. She was a freelance um Reporter, somebody noticed her, grabbed her, and it was AM Chicago until she got it moving. And then somehow she ended up getting it into the Oprah Winfrey show. Mm -hmm. I watched that pig nose, wide eyed woman go from pig nose, wide ass, to slender nose, slender ass. Not pig nose, okay. Pig nose, pig (laughs) nose. Go back and see, go back and see Sophia. Mm I, I done had to fight all my life. You see that pig nose widen when she say that line. Okay. And you can see her brain clear through her nose. Oh, child. Okay. And I've seen her evolve. What mm-hmm. I don't like about Oprah Winfrey is this. She has started Harpo Productions. She has given Ray, uh, Rachel Ray a chance. She's given Dr. Oz a chance. She's given Phil, Dr. Phil a chance. She's not giving anybody a chance except for Gail. Why is Gail wow. the only one you helping? Oh. And if y'all peep their relationship, it's something strange about those two. I'm starting I to have, believe it. Okay. I've never in my life seen no woman leave her husband to go on a Thelma and Louise vacation <laughs> with hope. <laughs> it's not yeah. something. Stedman it don't exist. That's Guido. He working yeah. a, a pastry or pizza pastry in Brooklyn. That's Guido. He don't exist because he wasn't even at the opening. Gail was. So if y'all start reading between the lines, it's something going on with those two that they don't want to come out. That's really what they are really about. Because I would not go leave my old man Uh to go hang out with no woman. I'm going to go get me a new old man. Uh And the the, the chick going to go sit down somewhere. Oh. This lady left her husband of some odd years, 30 odd years to go hang out with Oprah. This stuff ain't Oprah. Just come on out and tell everybody what you doing with Gail. Exactly. So y'all two together. I'm sorry. Okay. And y'all can go off in the chat said that ain't yes it is. Because I ain't going to leave no my old man for no chick and go on no safari 
no spa. And I'm the only one she helping. Yeah. I'm the only one that out of all the black population is getting, she got a covenant position with CBS. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't help nobody else. Oprah, I watched you grow. I was, she came out in 85. I was 12. And I watched her grow over the years. And when it got to the 90s, I was done with her. Because yeah. it seemed like she's about herself. Uh-huh. And the high, um, higher up she was getting, the, the altitude, they say when you lose the altitude, that bitch wasn't losing altitude. She was gaining more altitude. She was going <laughs> up, 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 up. And she was looking down on her people like she looked down on her sister, Pat. Pat used to stay in the blogs with her. I remember she that. Stay with National Acquire about the one she had. See, if you peep game with game, Oprah is really turned off with men because what happened to her as a child. You can't, you can't, you cannot escape that energy of your uncle was the first one who put his hands on you, not your husband, not your boyfriend, but a family member. You're turned off. Just like Ellen DeGeneres said, when she got touched, she was just turned off about men. And it was a family member that touched her. So she's not trying to communicate a network with a man. She's communicating a network with a woman. And Pat used to come out all the time and tell her, boom, 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 boom. She was so glad when Pat died, she didn't know what to do. Because Pat was all in the National Choir telling her business. Oh, she had a baby at 15. Oh, she got molested by her uncle. She was telling all of it. So she distanced herself from that ghetto mama who had all them babies on welfare and gave up that girl. She gave them up. She's distancing herself from anything that's black, and she's embraced the white because they're the ones who have helped. And we, and we got to tell it. We just got to tell it. Listen, I got a long line. Thank you for saying it. We got to tell it. No more hiding it. Let's tell it. No more. No more. Thank you for calling calling me. Take care. All right. Okay. Okay. A long line. Trying to let everybody talk. Uh, Pia, sound off. I can't take T.D. Jakes. I've never liked him. I can't stand him. I've always found him to be a shyster. He couldn't be your lover? <laughs> Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Ain't not, ain't not much, there's no money in the world that would make me lie next to a walrus. Really quickly, Tia, what do you say to these church members that are angry with us, us bloggers? <laughs> well, you know what? They always say in the last days that when the devil comes to earth, he's going to take as many souls to hell with him as is humanly possible. And that's right. what's happening. Oh. They need to open their eyes and realize that their preacher is flawed like a lot of human beings. Uh-huh. And if that sermon that he put out where he was nervous and shaken because yeah. I sent it to Perry, oh. if, that's, if that's not telling, I don't know what is. I think that he surrounds himself with a bunch of yes men oh. and they're not going to tell him anything wrong because he's probably feeding their pockets. Thank you, Tia. I got a long line. I know yeah. you're going to tell it. Thank you for sending us all the stuff you. too. I appreciate it. Take you're care. welcome. Take okay. care. Uh, Denzel, sound off. How you doing, uh, Sherelle Perry? How y'all doing? Happy, Happy doing. holidays. Y'all. You too. Y'all too. Um, my personal opinion, I think I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but he seems uh, TDJC seems guilty. It seems because guilty. yeah, because in that video, that sermon that that sermon that he did, mm-hmm. why was he shaking when he was trying to pick up his iPad? It's <laughs> it, it, it it seems like mm-hmm. it seems like he's guilty. Mm-hmm. So I, I I hope it's not true, mm-hmm. but if it is true, it's gonna be a hot mess. And th- his church members, they need to um, they they need to wake up. Hate to say it. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, Dizel, for calling in. I appreciate it. It's no problem. It's no problem. Y'all have a great night. You too. You Katrina, sound off. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Hey Cheryl. Good. Hey Perry. Good. Uh, I'm gonna make three statements. I'm gonna do it real quick. Okay. What I'm okay. saying about Oprah, I don't trust her ever since. Her show used to be just like Ricky Lake. They used to fight. They used to do all kinds of stuff on her show. She started off on All My Children. The, and the, thing, cause the second thing is, why everybody in Hawaii houses got messed up except for hers in The Rock? And where's these where's these people? What are they at? And the thing with Jackie, uh, I'm going to give you a little version of my life. I was in, I had surgery um, for a spinal fusion and they did it through my abdomen. And 
after that, I was hurting real bad. The doctors kept telling me they didn't see anything. They just want to push pain medicine on me. And my black doctor told me that uh, you're fine. Everything is okay. Your uterus the same size as your last child. Come to find out, I got to my house, couldn't even get out of my car. I had a stone in my appendix, was getting ready to burst. I had five, six fibroids in my uterus, and I had fibroids on my ovaries that was leaning over like a thing of grapes. So when people saying black people, black women go there complaining, we complaining for a reason. I was in the army. I can take a lot of pain. But don't put that focus on black women. That's the Thank one you. thing that she shouldn't have said. Thank and the you. second thing she shouldn't have said was um, she's up there apologizing, forgiving whatsoever. But you got to realize Jackie always been that way. My aunt goes to her services, what she used to, because she used to get those um, hormone pellets or whatever she used to have at her, at her place. Mm -hmm. But the thing with Jackie is, she's heavenly. She let heavenly, she, heavenly is her mouthpiece, because she want to still have that upstanding uh, 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 profile that she can do nothing wrong, that she's like the God. The, the God I still see we, we need to focus on being heard. We need to there focus you go. on There you hers. go. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. the thing with T.D. Jakes is, and I have nothing against nobody religion or going to the church or whatsoever, but God said you can read your Bible in a closet and oh. he would see you there. The, sec oh. the second thing is, can no man get you into heaven? The only person to get you into heaven is yourself. And then mm -hmm. another thing is, I don't understand why these preachers are driving fancy cars, going to live in a million dollar homes, but your mm -hmm. congregation mm -hmm. going through the soup line or can barely pay their mortgage. Thank you. That's right. what I don't understand. Right. That I mean, that's just totally crazy to me. I'm not mm -hmm. saying nobody shouldn't pay their tithes or whatsoever. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, I don't understand how they don't have to pay no taxes. They don't have to pay no income or anything because it's tax free when you are a preacher or bishop or all that type of stuff. It's tax free. But for him, to be, be all these preachers, these celebrity preachers, or the ones on TV or whatsoever, Joel mm -hmm. Osteen, all of them, and them are, what, ain't nothing but fakes because Jesus did not walk with the rich. He walked with the uh, the heathens, the poor, and the, the disabled. He didn't. He wasn't mingling around with the rich people. And then that's what people can't understand. By you having all this money, all this money is not going to help you get into heaven. You're not going to be that way, especially if you're being Thank greedy. You. You're taking all this money from your congregation, and these people barely just making it. They're in soup lines. They go, they put mortgages behind, but they're still trying to pay their tithes to make sure that they're doing the right thing. It's right. all a facade. God, now Jesus never asked anybody for money. He didn't go around when he was healing people saying, you got to pay me. When the people had leprosy, when they was blind, he did uh -huh. not say, you got to pay me to, uh, to do all this for you. No man can get you into heaven. No woman can get you into heaven. Thank when you. When you die, you're going by yourself. You can't, you can't take your mama. You can't take your brother. You can't take your sister. You can't take nobody but yourself. God going to call you. Your name is the only name that's going to be there. So no man can ever get you into heaven or woman can ever get you into heaven. If you don't Thank know your you. Bible, you just don't know. You, you know, everybody have a different versions of religion and whatsoever. But the thing about it is when you read the Bible, God give you wisdom when you're reading, if you're reading from your heart, simply because the reason is when, because reading the Bible, you have to read like a couple of times because there's a lot of metaphors in there. You know, when they say bosom, that means heart. But a lot of people think he's talking about breasts. It's a lot of metaphors and there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. But I'm, I know I'm taking up enough time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's... I'm just saying, I mean, Jackie is a mess. Oprah is a mess. She, okay, like, like the other lady said, she was giving all that money. I mean, because her shows used to be just like Ricky Lake. I was, I grew up watching her. Her shows used to be just like Ricky Lake shows. They used well, to thank you, everything Katrina, on. for calling in, and I'm glad you spoke up. Thank you so much. Yeah, You're thanks welcome. for calling, in and happy holidays. Happy hey, holidays. I'm trying to get a lot of people in. I want to hear the. They're watching this. I want you to hear what the people are saying. Go ahead, CEO. Sound off, girl. Hey, this, this, you know who this is. I know Ooh, who Sean, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, Perry. Hi, Sherelle. Hey. Hi. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying, first of all, it, Oprah became big because the black community supported her so much. Right. We put our support in her, and this is why she is where she is. Oprah became a mess when... I'm sure, you know, there's a crossover point, just like with the music industry, the mm -hmm. black people get all of the black artists where they need to be right. to cross over. Right. And so now she's crossed over and she has to make her allegiance with those who put the money in her pocket. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. 
She That's chose the money over blackness. Exactly. And she has not been the same since then. Sound off on TD Jakes really quick. Okay, so TD Jakes, let me tell y'all, my grandmother, because when we were in Christianity, my grandmother told me, like, years, like, when he first really started getting popular, that she did not like him. It's something about him that wasn't right. And I got offended because I'm like, what do you mean? He, you know, he's a man of the club. He's preaching the word. She was like, no, it's something about him that's not right. We went to go see T.D. Jakes at Without Walls Church. I don't know if y'all ever heard about them in Tampa, Florida with Paula White. And I forget what her husband name was. And we actually saw T.D. Jakes backstage. And when I tell you that I was so turned off, when I tell you that you have to, they, oh, the Lord told me that it's 10 people in here that can give uh, $5,000. And if you give the $5,000, then you get to get prayed for. That was the one of the worst experiences that we've had. And I realized then that what my grandmother said, I knew then that she was correct. We stopped watching him and stopped following him way back. Then. It was a complete and total turn off. It was a circus. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's the sweat for me. Yeah. <laughs> he was sweating like he was a criminal in a damn interrogation room. Yeah. Listen, and then when they, I don't know if y'all heard him. Okay, so when he started out, he seemed like he was okay. But when they brought to him the allegations about um his son, he stood firm behind his son and then supported the son. And then when they asked him his position on um LGBTQ, he was talking about that, you know, the, the Bible is always evolving and this, that, and the third. I could tell then that he kind of shifted his position, but he was all like, after that, you could see like the little feminine things coming out with him. And it's like you ignore it, but you, you know that it's- Did you just Jake's feminine? Yeah. <laughs> Did you just say that? Like that? Uh, I mean, that's the, that's the rumor. Sorry, right? I mean, like, yeah. People in uh, West Virginia I mean, said he grew I mean, up and that he was gay. But yeah, I mean, exactly. you know, Say that, but don't lie. Like you, right, yeah, right, you preaching right, in the yeah. pulpit. You know this and that, the third. Like tell the truth. Why are you lying about about who you are? And I'm gonna say this because you're going in and out. No one has a problem with TD Jakes being gay, but right, stop exactly. lying about it. That's what we and have a problem. That's the problem. He's deceiving his members. Like right. they can accept it or not accept it, but give them that right. Anyway, exactly. speak, speak the truth. Speak. Let the me word. try to get a couple more people in. And uh, you're having sound troubles today, uh, CEO. But thank you, girl, for calling in. Yeah, thanks for I calling. Appreciate you. Okay, thank y'all. You, you take, take care. care. Uh, Uncle Charles, sound off really quickly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let me tell you something. If you still believe in TG Jakes at this point, then you wherever you go, you need to be there. Let me explain some to you. You do not go to those parties and not and you unless you involved. And first of all, it's going to take them 35 to 45 days to find somebody to look at him naked because they ain't <laughs> going to do it for free. I can tell you that. And that's all I got to say. Oprah, let me say this real quick. Oprah says it's more than one way to God. No, it's not. It's only one way to God. That's only one way to God, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the way that is, and I appreciate y'all. Okay, thank, thank you, bro. Uncle Charles. Take oh, care. Oh, my God. Here, you too much. Stop. Is it Sh <laughs> Sh Shalita? Shahida. Shahida. Sound off really quickly. We got three minutes. Go ahead. Oh, no. three. Okay. So uh, I, mean, I guess I start with Oprah. So Oprah, you know, she's a sellout. Sorry to mm -hmm. say. Oprah is like, if you think back, I'm only 40 years old, but I've been hearing pretty much my whole life, especially going into high school years, how Oprah was like the divide of the black community. Like mm -hmm. the black women and black men, we, we stand together especially in this day and age, more of us are coming together. I don't care what the gender divide is. I don't care what this whole push for us to be separate. She is a part of that. She's one of the main people to push that uh, negative black male image and yeah, this yeah. feminism aspect. That is her. And that's what she's going to be accountable for. And she's still doing it to this day. And I'm still glad you're saying that because this production company's listening. I want you to hear the people. I didn't make yeah. this up. Yeah, hear me, Oprah. Hear me, Oprah, and whoever else is listening. You're going to hear us because we are the black grassroots. We are who matter, who counts, all of us together. Mm. And we're going to change this country. Oprah is a part of the problem. She's Ooh. been a part of the problem since day one, mm. okay? Because mm. I, uh, if you think about it, I'm a, I'm a, I might say some stuff that's controversial, but I'm not to say it. Okay. All right. Bill say Cosby it. set the precedent. Bill Cosby set the precedent for what black excellence was with his 
calculated television programming, okay? Well, that right. raised a generation that made all of us proud, uh -huh. okay? She was the opposite. She was the opposite. People like her, Gail and, and whoever else, they ushered in that, that, that real tough black feminist uh, agenda working with the people, the palm color people. I, I mean, I should say plain about it and say what I really want to say, but this mm -hmm. is your show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to disrespect your show, but what I, I'm saying I is like that, what you're saying. Yes, you're, you I, have I, to. Yes. People have to listen to you. You have, you're holding the. You stand for the majority. This is what people are saying to me. And I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gonna say one more thing. The people over there in that country that's in war right now, they said here in Atlanta, Georgia, in September, uh, that the young black generation is the is the biggest problem for them. Do you know who I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. if they said that the young, but my generation, the millennial Why? generation and my children's generation, generations, because we are the ones, and along with a lot of the good elders and older you know, people, I wanna say there's a lot of good people, uh, good in, in y'all's group as well. But what I'm saying is that they, because they know that the youth is the ones who's gonna carry us into the Thank next you. 100 years. We got to be thinking as a black collective. Oprah is she is a part of the problem. She is a gatekeeper, and her and the rest of them like that. They're gonna get they're gonna, they're gonna be out. They're gonna be out. <laughs> she know it. Ain't nobody rocking with her. In the memory of the the good things that our our ancestors and our elders have put forth, is gonna stand, and we're gonna we're continuing to take that into the next 100 years. If 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 that's where we will be, if God allows us to be. Uh, as a people and as a world for a hundred more years. We, we don't know. I feel like us older people, we were so impressed. We just, I don't know. We just didn't see it. And I'm glad y'all coming forward. We just didn't see it. I didn't see it till a month ago. I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I mean, see it things, now. Things wasn't like, and this is the problem too, right? Like now things are, when things happen in LA, Virginia, mm -hmm. you hear about it way faster with social media than we did before. Maybe that's what so it is. Yeah. I think that's the like if, if we would have seen all the things that was going on behind the scenes, we probably yeah. would have thought different. All the time that's we right. did her when she came she, on she did, I want you to talk about T D Jakes really quick. That's right. I'm that's right. Okay. Let me get on T D Jakes. And I want to say it's um it's a reckoning. It's a reckoning. This is the year of revelation. Okay. All the people, all these fraudulent people are being exposed and he is one of them. And matter of fact, it was prophesied. I don't know if y'all seen the video a year ago mm -hmm. in September 2022 that he was going to fall and it was going to have something to do with his sexuality. Oh. It, it, it's a woman on YouTube. You know, she's a, um, I forgot her name. I, if you go to, um, I, I don't want to say, I don't know her name, but she's a woman on YouTube. If you go look at some of those videos about Diddy, um, uh, NC Tough. Uh, t TV. He has uh, her name on his on his video. Um, this woman prophesied in 2022 September about TD Jakes and about many more people that will fall. They will have the biggest falls in that ever that could ever be because of what they're doing. He's just a, he's just a, a part of the problem. He's he's there's so many much more. I, I'm telling you, uh, people have to understand. You can't follow these people out here. If somebody is actually a person who represent or is a representative or of our creator, they are not going to be doing that. And they, he and people like him, they owe the black community. They but let me ask the you this really community. quickly. What do you say to the very devoted followers of TD Jakes that are just hurt and they, 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 they don't believe it and they're overwhelmed? What are your they, words to them? I got to say this. What in the world has TD Jakes and other pastors done for this black community? They're stifling money off. Y'all have to wake up. You got to wake up because you got to understand that's not what God wants for you. You suppose that money you tithe that goes back to the community. It don't just go to one person or a few people. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that, is, that is an abomination. Mm -hmm. What you have, they, they don't, don't even understand what you have actually done to the community by not giving back. There's no reason why our community as black people that we should be where we are. But these churches, because they got that government money in the 60s, they got that government money during the Bush administration and in the 60s to be, um, uh, what do you call it, neutral when it comes to politics or, or to push a certain agenda, the Democrat agenda. And look what it's done for our community. 
look what it's done. They should be the main ones shouting reparations and, and for, for our ancestors. But you want to act like it's just for your people and your, your little corner and your, uh, your household. That's evil. And that's why evil continues to circulate. You know, we don't, these people are not God, okay? And these people are not ordained by God. They're not. And they're not speaking the truth because prosperity preaching, that is, that is of the devil. Yes, it's good to, to preach, you know, being, living well and those types of things, but you're not preaching the full gospel. Let me tell you, you're not, you're not, you're not preaching because it's not all about uh, uh, money. You're not teaching them what's going to happen. You're not teaching that Jesus is going to come back. You're not teaching what's really going to happen. You're not telling about the day of judgment, the day of reckoning, and, and what good and evil really is. You're accepting all and everything. Everything is not acceptable. Let me tell you, it's not. And God knows that. And that's why these people, if Jesus was here right now, these people, would, he would not be on their side because these people are not speaking the truth. These people have made deals with the devil, and that is that. Mm. Mm. That's We're going to leave it on that note because that's what I want my generation to hear. Like, I know this is overwhelming for y'all. It was overwhelming for me, but we got to listen to them. Don't get stuck in the past. And I know it hurts. It hurts because you thought he was one way. Right. But he not. Just listen to this. Listen to these young people. Listen. And he's going to be held accountable more than anybody because of his place in society. He's yeah. going to be held accountable for stealing, for leading people astray. Okay, if he don't change and if he don't repent and if he don't make right and that money, let me tell you something, that money that, that, that he's been privileged to get, that money is supposed to be spread around and, and, and helping other people prosper, not just you. You're taking that money and that money is not even good. You've made that money unclean. He's going to have to deal with the creator on that. He's going to have to deal with it. And all his family, all them people who, boy, I tell you that the church is going to have to change the church. Yes. And, and let me tell you, and I know, I know that people are saying, you know, they're saying one thing, I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't been through, I've been through as far as my family coming through the church, going to the nation of Islam, then becoming into Orthodox Islam. And we still love our Christian brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, Black people, period. Uh, if you cut, it, it don't matter. This money is supposed to help the community. Right. Yes. I got to get on that. Thank okay. you so much for calling. Thank you for yes. And speaking up. I appreciate it. I really, yes, really ma'am. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Love y'all. Take care. You Love you too. I've said it. The people have spoken. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing my opinions, my thoughts. It is what it is. I understand people are going, this is a painful subject, especially with T.D. Jakes. It's yeah, painful. Yeah, yeah. You thought he was one way, but just take a step back and remember, nobody's perfect. Nope. That man is not who he says he is. And I'm going to end it at that. And I, I, I still, you know, I, I don't want to be disrespectful, T.D. Jakes, but if you do anything, listen to this video and listen to the people. Oprah, listen to the people. All right, you guys, I love you. I was supposed to come on for a short time. Uh, Angela, you are crazy. We're going to pray for the power bottom. Y'all are messy. <laughs> Perry, thank you for coming on. Yeah, no, you got it. We were, uh, and hopefully we will resume tomorrow. We're trying to re relax and then we'll come back in January with a vengeance, but we're just tired. So everybody, this was a difficult subject. Thank everybody for being adult and listening to each other. And then I'll say this to you, right? And then we'll finish up. I mean, because it's one thing to pimp your uh, conjugation. But you're going to catch hell when you try to pimp God. That's why I think things are coming out certain levels you don't play. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think T.D. Jakes don't got himself into this situation. Yes, it's a mess. So. All right, you guys. Uh, Perry, don't play the song. We'll just say bye. Okay, okay. All, <laughs> All right. right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for bye, listening. Everybody. Take care.